Welcome, everyone, to Kingdom Concepts. I'm so blessed to have you with us today. Amen. What a beautiful Monday this is. And I pray, amen, that you've come with a hungry heart. I pray that you've come expecting. Amen. We've been talking about purpose. We've been talking about, you know, being faithful, amen, to God and knowing where he's wanting your life to go. And today we're going to be adding on that, building upon right. that. I'm telling you, God is in the business of promotion. Amen. God loves taking people from where they're at and raising them up to where he wants their life to be. And we have experienced that yes. in our own lives, amen? And we want to take what we've learned, amen? And we want to share those things with you. So we'd love for you to grab your Bible, grab a notebook, amen, and a pen. And we'd love for you to join us right now as we step into talking about faithfulness, amen? How faithfulness affects you, how it affects the calling of God, the purpose of God for your life, amen? And so this is going to be a, a, this is going to be a good time that yeah, we get to is. share, amen? And if you haven't already, we want to encourage you and invite you to like and to subscribe, amen, to our Kingdom Concepts channel. Share it with your family and friends. Let us know, amen, what this program has been doing for you, amen? It means a lot to us. You mean a lot to us. Amen. And we want to be able to reach as many people as we can. Amen. With the glorious gospel and with tools that will cause you to be effective. Amen. And the purpose that God has for your life. Amen. And so, uh, you know, when it comes to faithfulness, I always think about how good I treat you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, before you get started, I want to just say that in this time and age that we have right now, there's so many different tools that we have. Mm, many. So many different tools that we have to be able to achieve a life of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. We have podcasts every day. We have programs like this. We have um, the Bible, 10, 20 different, um, you know, translations in our, by, you know, just in one app, you yeah. know. We have uh, uh, YouTube videos that we can watch. We have every kind of social media that we can watch. There's so many different ways that we can get the word inside of us and the word is what make, makes us faithful when we fall in love with god we fall in love with his word then we want to be faithful and there's so many things that that we can we can do to help us be faithful um, i say that to say you know it's not hard to be faithful it's no not, it's, it's not it's a, it's a decision that we make it's something that we decide to be mm -hmm. it's something that 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 becomes easy for us as we keep falling in love with God. It really is. Yeah. And faithfulness has nothing to do with your feelings. Mm -mm, it doesn't. You know, some people are faithful to their feelings. Oh, it's like, come on, say that. It's like, if uh, if you treat me right, you know what, then I'll be faithful to this That's relationship. Right. But, you know, if you don't, then, you know, I'm not going to be faithful. You know, uh, feelings have nothing to do with being That's faithful. Right. You know, feelings will always mess you up. And I think in this day and age that we're living in, you have a lot of people that experience emotional failure mm -hmm. and it shows up in there being a lack of faithfulness, right. a lack of diligence, right. a, a, a lack of consistency mm -hmm. when it comes to doing the right things and right, you know, when you do the right things, it causes right living. That's right. And it's so important for us, amen, to not only discover what our purpose is, the, the way that God wants to use us, because you make a great you and a lousy anybody else. And the Lord said that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So don't allow anybody, amen, to try to get into your head and tell you that, you know, you're weird or, you know, you're a mistake. You know, don't let the devil, don't rent no space out in your mind to the devil to, to tell you those things. You might not be like other people, that, that, but that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with mm -hmm. you. That's right. Amen. You can live just as clean as anybody else. You can live just as holy as anybody else, but God designed you to be you. Amen. And so it's important for us to discover what is, what is the the purpose that God has for my life. What does he want to accomplish through me while I'm on this earth? And then be faithful That's to right. it because faithfulness will always lead you in the direction of the perfect will of God for your That's life. Right. He does. He yeah. does. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, uh, I want you, amen, to turn in your Bibles. Let's just jump right in to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. And I'll go ahead and let you uh, go there. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Amen. If you're taking notes, um, I want you to write this down. Um, faithfulness is what God is requiring from every one of us right now to be able to gain access to what's on the other side of that new level 
that God has positioned you for. Amen. And it's so vital for us, amen, to understand the value of faithfulness. I think sometimes people are so purpose driven, but if you don't have faithfulness, mm -hmm. the character of faithfulness, mm -hmm. you will rise and fall. Amen. You'll, you'll find yourself, you know, reaching for something that always appears to be out of your grasp. And it's because God promotes faithfulness. Right. Write that down. He promotes faithfulness. That's so, right. you know, God will meet you where you're at. If you just be faithful with what you're doing now, the Bible says that if you're faithful with a little, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a little thing, then God will cause you to be in charge of more things. He can trust you with more things. If you're not faithful with little things, the last thing he's going to do is trust you with, uh, you know, a greater influence no. to where you can hurt people, you know. Um, and so it's important for us to understand this. And uh, I think that it's, it's just something that's in so many people to think that they have to start off doing something great for God, mm -hmm. you know, to where us, ministry for us was us driving the church van to pick people up and me cleaning the, the church. You know, I was faithful to a vacuum and faithful to cleaning the restrooms. And that's where ministry started for us. But I was faithful. We were, faithful. Was, we were the best toilet cleaners, the best mm -hmm. vacuumers. We were the best, you know. Nursery workers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we got involved in everything, but we were faithful from, from what some folks would consider the least things to the things that we're entrusted with now. Now God trusts us with a worldwide audience, with, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of pastors around the world that we've been able to impart and invest in, you know, over the, the years. And it, it's just been a beautiful experience, but it, we can trace it all back to discovering our purpose, amen, which mm -hmm. we talked about in some of the recent episodes you know, and, and how to live effectively. Once you know what your purpose is, how to live effectively, and then taking our lives from there into faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not mm -hmm. just having uh, highs and lows, feasts and famines when it comes to <clears throat> being faithful. You know, I remember when we first got saved <clears throat> and we um, would get, you know, I, we told them, yeah, we'll help wherever. And we got put in to be uh, youth helpers and children's church helpers and to be part of the school bus and do all greeters the ushering yeah we, we we said well well where do you need us we'll we'll do that and i remember they would give us a little calendar and this before we all had cell phones and digital stuff they would give us a calendar and we would put it on the refrigerator and they would put like where our name was and a xerox copy and we'd put it and not once did we look at that and say oh well we're scheduled but we're just not going to show up Mm -hmm. We know it was never, oh, yeah. it was never a, we're not going to show up or I would need to switch with somebody or oh, I just can't do it or I really want to be in service today. And it was never an option. It was, okay, this is when, this is when they said they need us. Mm -hmm. So this is when we are going to, to be there. And it, I think it was, you know, later on in your Christian walk and stuff that, that we realized, oh, people don't see that. Don't yeah. people don't do that. You oh, know, yeah. people don't see that, uh, like, you know, it, it's different because you, you go to work Monday through Friday and you have a schedule. It's mm -hmm. 8 to 5 or 2 to 10 or 8 to, to 7, 8 to 4, whatever the schedule is. They would never look at their schedule and say, oh, well, I just don't want to go there. Yeah, no call, no show. show. No call, no show. They, they don't do, do it that way. But, oh, you're, you're scheduled to help at the church or you're scheduled to be there to be a helper or whatever, whatever ministry that you're involved in. And all of a sudden that becomes a voluntary thing and that becomes a place where you can choose not to be faithful mm -hmm. and people don't see it that way mm -hmm. they don't see the fact that you are choosing not to be faithful in mm -hmm. this area that you said you would be in i'm not talking about you know something happens and or you have oh, to yeah. do something else there's unexpected things absolutely but it shouldn't be normal it shouldn't be normal absolutely we we have that you know unexpected things that happen you call your your lead you say hey i'm sorry can you can how, who can I trade with? What can I do? I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about a choice to not be faithful. Mm. You know, uh, that's the same way it is in marriage. You, you choose not to be faithful. It just, adultery just doesn't happen. It's mm. a choice to not be faithful. Yeah. And when you get married, you're, you're, you're supposed to choose to be faithful. You're supposed mm -hmm. to choose to be loyal. And People just think that it's just, oh, it just happened. No, no, no. It was somewhere along the line, there became a choice mm. to not be faithful in this area of ministry or your marriage or even faithful in your friendships, faithful yeah. in areas 
that you chose to be faithful in. And it, and it really is a choice. It's like you said, it's not a feeling. You know, sometimes I didn't feel like being in the nursery. Mm. I didn't like them little four-year-old kids that were still in diapers and I'd lift their big butts and <laughs> clean their, you know, I didn't their like, parents wouldn't I didn't potty like train them. Yeah, I didn't like that. Kids you 10 know? years old wearing diapers. I know, I didn't like that. But I chose to be faithful, yeah. so I had to have a good attitude about it, you know. Yeah, but this is the thing. I mean, if you guys are taking notes, you really want to write this down because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what what causes a lot of people to be faithful. People are faithful to what's important to them. That's the truth. Write that down. That people are truth. faithful to what is important to them. Amen. When you when paying your rent is important to you, you're not going to do a no call no show on your job. You're going to faithfully be up early in the morning to be able to go to work. You're going to, you're going to show up prepared to work. Mm -hmm. You're going to do everything you can to uh, get the job done, impress your employer, because you know that there's raises, bonuses, yes. promotions that will come, amen, through you being faithful to that job, and, and, it, and it promotes you. Mm -hmm. um, and, th and that's why sometimes it's a, a, a challenge when it comes to, you know, like ministry, if you're you know, involved in a house of worship, which you should be somewhere, amen, you should have a pastor, you, or maybe you are a pastor watching this program. Um, you have to teach people this. Some people, when it comes to church, they have a volunteer mentality. Mm -hmm. And when you're a volunteer, that means that everything's optional, mm -hmm. amen, versus the Bible doesn't teach us a volunteer mentality. It's a stewardship. That's right. Amen, to where God's entrusted us with his house, with his people, That's right. with the flock of God. And the last thing that I want to do is, is be an unfaithful steward. The Bible talks about unfaithful stewards, you know, over in Matthew 25, read that. Um, you want to be found faithful. So we gave you a lot of time to go to Proverbs <laughs> chapter 20, verse 6, because this is so powerful. Um, go ahead and read that. It says, most, this in King James Version, most men will proclaim every one of his goodness, but a faithful man, who can find? See, it's one thing for you to toot your own horn, you know, because how many know people are usually their best subject and their best cheerleader? You know, but it's a whole nother thing when you're found faithful. Yeah. That means to where somebody's looking for faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Amen. To find you means you've been sought out. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, God is seeking faithful people that he can entrust, not just with ministry, but with the anointing, mm -hmm. with the power mm -hmm. of God. God's looking for people that he can trust with greater things. And, you know, one of the things that came before me, and I've kept this in front of me, is something that our pastor, Dr. Jerry Seville, something that God had spoken to his heart um, when uh, uh, he was flying over to the victory campaign that we were at in 2019 over in Australia, over at Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. The Lord told him this. He said, in 2020, I will open a new door and I will mm -hmm. cause my faithful ones. Mm -hmm. Come on. Somebody say faithful ones. Faithful ones. Amen. Raise your hand if you're a faithful I'm one. I'm a faithful one. He says, and I will cause my faithful ones to experience supernatural increase as never before. Amen. Man, that ought to put a shout on your lips if you know that you've been found faithful. Amen. You want your life to, if you want your life to attract, uh, you know, God's gaze, then be found faithful. Mm -hmm. God's looking for people that mm -hmm. he can trust with more. And, you know, it's sad because, you know, it, it, the question is, who can find a faithful person? Because faithfulness is something that there is not, it's sad to say, but you don't find an abundance of faithful. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the 80-20 principle. You got 20% of people in a congregation that are faithful to taking care of, you know, the 100% of people that, that are there. You know, a success in companies, a lot of times it's 20% of the people, amen, that are building the company, you know, versus the 80%. And when it comes to ministry, uh, I mean, we've served in every every tier of ministry, you know, from, again, coming in ground floor all the way up to where God's trusting us now with worldwide ministry in multiple campuses. And in that, you know, we've seen things, you know, we've seen people that because they're so consistently unfaithful to ministry that when they are put on a, a calendar for like children's ministry, especially, um, the leader already knows I have to have a backup person uh, waiting because this person's so inconsistent that they always leave us hanging and I need to take care of the children. And that should never happen in the house of God. 
You know, uh, we should be, if, if you're going to be faithful to anything, be faithful to God. Oh, yeah. My Lord. You know, if, if uh, in, but it's sad but true that you have folks that they, again, it goes back to that volunteer mentality, and they're not thinking about the reward and the honor mm -hmm. of being able to serve the King of Kings through the, you know, by, by ministering to what matters to him the most, which is his people. I, faithfulness really causes it causes your life to grow in ways that you never thought possible. And not only that, but it causes you to advance. It causes you to advance oh, in, in so much more areas. You know, I saw this uh, illustration one time, and it, it had two people at the, at the start line. And these two people, they had um, the same amount of education, had the same amount of everything, and they started at the same time. But one person was a lot slower in what they could do, not slower mentally, but just slower in in how they did things, mm -hmm. you know. And the other person was a lot quicker, a lot faster, and, and you know, and it just started with this graph of watching them grow. Mm -hmm. The one that was slower, he was steady though. He mm -hmm. was faithful. And you could see the graph as this guy would stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. And while this guy, it's just, it, this guy kept going and advancing because he never stopped. He remained steadfast and faithful and mm -hmm. kept stopping. And this guy would stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. And it, it just it just showed you how much faithfulness, no matter where you're at, mm -hmm. no matter if you're in the nursery or in youth or or wherever you're at, you know, in, in ushers or greeters. Or giving, or serving. Serve, I mean. Wherever you're at, if you're steady, if you're faithful, you're going to get to where you're supposed to be a lot faster than somebody that that would uh, just keep stopping and keep going, keep stopping. You know, you have people that come in. Oh, they're great. This they're charismatic. They're very a good character, good, uh, uh, you know, charisma. They have all of that. But what do you say that they're a flash in the pan? It's just yeah. like they're there and gone where you have those people that are faithful, that are there for a long for the long haul. They're there for the long haul. You know, we were at uh, a friend's church this, this last week, and I looked up, and um, they were doing their, um, the way that they did their communion was amazing. It was great. Yeah, it was but I looked up, and there's eight men. Okay, mm -hmm. there's these eight men, and the way that they had their communion, they had it uh, very, it was just very nice the way they did it. They had four men, the way they handed it off. They did it all military style. It was just great. But I was sitting there, and I, I was just like, this guy's been with them 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, been there since the church started. You know, all of their children go there. All of their grandchildren go there. Their spout, the children's spouses go there. What did that have to, that had to do with the faithfulness of the father mm -hmm. that kept being steady? Mm -hmm. And now their children are coming up and they're seeing the faithfulness of their father. They're seeing the faithfulness of their mother. And now they're faithful in the church. You know, mm -hmm. it's so important for us to, Give those examples to our children. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's we're 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 living a life that others are mm -hmm. watching. We're, some some of us are the only Bible some people yes, will ever yes. read, and and this isn't something new. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, faithfulness. Uh, I mean, that's what with faithfulness, even the turtles made it on the ark. You know what I mean? It's like they were consistent. <laughs> you know, and and in the Bible, it says a lot about you know when people are faithful. You know, a faithful man. You know, it says, shall abound with blessings. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says about a faithful person. They're going to abound with blessings. Amen. That means that they're going to be consistently, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in, having increase operating in their lives. That's why, you know, what the Lord spoke to Dr. Seville. God said, I'm going to bless the faithful ones. There's a new door and there's supernatural increase on the other side of it. But when you read your Bible, even the, 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 the letters that you read, you know, um, over here in the New Testament, I mean... There was a distinction between people that just attended church and people that were faithful. And I'll give you two examples. Write this down. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, and Colossians chapter 1, verse 2. While you go there, let me read this scripture that you just quoted. It says, Proverbs 28, 20. It's a really good, good scripture. It's good to stand. This is the Amplified Classic. It says, a faithful man shall abound with blessings, mm -hmm. but he who makes haste to be rich at any cost shall not go unpunished. So a faithful man shall abound in blessings. That means that they're that faithfulness, man. Things are going to come upon them. Yeah, it's gonna it's 
if you're faithful, those, those blessings are going to chase you down. Those blessings are going to be there waiting for you. And, and we, we just have to be faithful. That's, yeah. all, that's all our job is to and be faithful. And it shouldn't be hard to be faithful. It's not hard serve to a be, faithful God. It's not hard to be faithful. You know, I'll say this. If you hang out with unfaithful people, you're going to be just like them. You're going to find yourself challenged to honor your commitments. Oh, that's the truth. To honor your word. Uh, you know, and your word is your bond. It should mean everything to you. People should be able to count on your word like they count on God and his word. You know, uh, God and his word are one. You know, but... Uh, but I, I, I want you to see this. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Look what the Apostle Paul said. Uh, a, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, check this out, and, conjunction word, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Notice he made a distinction between saints and faithful saints. Mm. And then when you read over here in Colossians chapter 1, another example, another letter that he wrote to the church of Colossians, uh, to Colossia, and this is what it says. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and the faithful brethren in Christ who are there at Coloss. So notice there's a distinction here between saints and faithful. And so if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Um, you mean there's people that are saved and just saved? That's it? Well, you know, you can be a saint, you can be a child of God and still not be faithful. And this is why some people uh, get disenchanted or, you know, when it comes to uh, being a believer is that they're unfaithful, but they don't understand why they don't have the blessings that they see operating upon people that are faithful. Mm. They think that there's a double standard in the church or that there's a clique or there's a group of folks that get preferential treatment. It's like, no, the difference is faithfulness. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're found faithful, nobody can keep you from abounding. Nobody can hold back your promotion. Nobody can hold, hold back, you know, the increase that shows up in every area of your life when you've been found faithful. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Joseph, man, he was found faithful and in a, in a prison, and God took him from the prison to the palace. Couldn't nobody hold him back because God promotes faithfulness. But I'm just telling you, you're going to identify in God's book as the saints or the faithful. <laughs> it's your choice based on what you do with the the opportunities and the purpose that God has entrusted to you and the ministries that he's planted you in. That's right. I like what you said about, uh, you know, faithfulness and that you said right now, oh, that there's a click or there's a this or there's a that. It's not. those The ones that you see there all the time, the ones that you see around the pastors or the ministers all the time, those are the ones that are there early and leaving late. Those are the ones that are doing the job, getting it done. And to you, it's like a click. But no, honey, no. that's not a click. That's called the worker yeah. bees. That's called yeah. the faithful. That's called the ones that are stewarding their yeah. time. Yeah, what some people call politics, we call faithfulness. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know how many times that I've heard, oh, well, your family's just doing everything in the church. You know, so much nepotism. And, oh, your, your, your family's on the worship team. Your family's in children's, you know. Your family's in youth. Your family's in every area of this ministry. You know why? Because my family shows up. My family comes early. My family comes late. You can ask any member of my family, your family, we don't give them special treatment. Mm, oh, you, not you, at no, all. We, if anything, we, we expect more from them because mm -hmm. they are our family mm -hmm. and they're going to be there early, be there, mm -hmm. you know, late helping and setting up, breaking down. Yeah. You know, if somebody's not there when there's work, yeah. where are you at? Well, the, di <laughs> well, the difference is this, is that, um, and we can say this unapologetically, we've given our entire church, our congregation, we've given them an example of faithfulness. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that we're perfect, no. but I'm telling you, we are faithful. Yeah. And we've given that example, and some folks just choose to grab a hold of that and, 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 and let it be something that's a part of their life, part of their testimony, and, and God promotes faithfulness. And so uh, it's, it's really a choice, amen? And we're going to get into this more in our next episode. Uh, we'll do a part two, amen, on this faithfulness, because I want to continue along this, along this line of thought, because your purpose is so important to God. It's so important to the church that God's planted you in and the work that he's entrusted you to you. You need it, too. Oh, You're so needed. You, yeah. you may think that what you do is, is, is not as important, or you may think that what you do isn't, being seen it's so needed yeah god will promote it i'm telling you god will take you from where you're at to a whole nother place amen we love you we thank you for being here again man we want to be able to do more for you amen that's why we have this program so please if you haven't yet 
Please like and subscribe to our Kingdom Concepts channel. We would love for you to receive every new episode. Every Monday, amen, we're putting something inside That's your right. inbox to help you to grow and fulfill the purpose that God has for your life, amen? We're committed to your success. We want to see you thrive. We want to see you step through that open door and experience all that God has for you. God bless you, and thank you for being with us today on Kingdom Concepts.